So, I'm in pain, right? I'm in pain all the time. Right now, I'm in pain. And it, it's in my head, right? It's going on at all times. And the only way to solve this pain is for me to complete this journey. I'm making a journey, and I'm going from bad design to good design. And I'm going to show you what it's like along the way, and I'm hoping that you'll be able to help me. And then as we leave this room, when we go about our lives, perhaps we can encourage ourselves and our friends to do something about it. So here's the first thing, right? I'm, I've checked in, LaGuardia Airport. I'm ready to board my flight. I'm at the gate, standing there, a couple of hundred people, and an announcement comes on. Uh, good morning, everybody. We'd like to begin by welcoming our Diamond Club members. Diamond Club members, please come forward. Not you. <laughs> I'm like, all right, okay, well, fair enough. So I'm standing there. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to now begin by welcoming our Gold Club members. Still not you. Stay where you are. Pregnant woman, stay there. Woman with children, stay still. Family, old people, no, you move. Gold Club members first, please. So you can imagine how I'm feeling. So I get on the plane, I've got to put my case up in the locker, and it won't go in. I say, oh, excuse me, miss, uh, there's no room. Did you buy an early board pass? I, no, I, I didn't, I didn't. Well, then you haven't got room for it. Next time, buy an early board pass. Oh, all right, well, it, it doesn't go under the seat either. Well, you should have bought an extra room pass if you want to put it under the seat. Oh, right, well, and just out of interest, will it be any food? Yes, we'll be selling food. It's called our flight lunch, and it'll be later on, and you can pay for it. I'm like, wow, okay, well, I feel special. See, this all goes together to make me wonder, what were they thinking? What on earth went through the mind of the person that put that together? This is not a bad person, right? She's reading a script, or he. Who, someone came up with that. So to me, that's like the pit of hell. That's the pit of despair on my journey. That's terrible design. Now, on the other hand, there's a store in America called Trader Joe's. Right? I used to live in New York. Trader Joe's is there, and you go in to Trader Joe's. It's like a primarily organic supermarket, but they're all over the US. And you walk in, and someone says to you, welcome, hello. And you go, what? Because I'm a New Yorker, right? I hate everybody. So they go, welcome. And I, I'm like, oh. So I go to pick something up, and they say, oh, actually, sir, we have that over there. It's on discount. I can go and fetch one for you if you like. You're like, what? So then, you know, you go through the process, you go to pay, you're, you're queuing up to pay, and then somebody will say, oh, if anyone's forgotten anything, or if you've got something you don't want, just let me know, and I'll, I'll get it for you. And you're like, this is just weird. So I spoke to them, I said, why'd you do this? Why are you like this? And they said, well, why wouldn't we be? It's just nice, right? So for me, this is on the highest mountain, right? So I've gone to the pit of despair, and now I'm on the highest mountain, and I can see where I'm going, I can see this... This target I've got, this wonderful mountain of great design that I'm heading to and, and, and with all the pain that's going on around me. So I rent a car. Uh, it's one of these. And I get in the car and like a lot of people, I have a phone, right? So I, I sit in the car and I think I better pair the phone with the car because I don't want to get interrupted while I'm driving. So I push a load of buttons and I'm like, do you want to pair the phone? I'm like, yes, right, push this, yep, yep, yep. And I'm, I'm like, and I'm giving it verbal commands, and it's just not happening. And I'm not entirely, I'm fairly stupid, but I'm not entirely stupid. So I go in the office, and the guy goes, I know what you need. You need our phone expert. Hold on. So he gets Joe from out the back, and Joe comes in and sits in my car, and he must have put in about five pages of JavaScript into the dashboard. And then he recites a Sanskrit incantation for the verbal commands, and finally, my phone is connected, right? So we're good. Of course, the minute I turn the car off at my destination, boom, it's gone. And I'm like, how do they not know? How do they not know? Because these guys do. I rented one of these, and it said, would you like to connect? And I said, yes. And it went, connected. <laughs> what? And then, and then I, I park the car, I go for a little walk, and I get a message on my phone, and it says, just in case you're wondering, here's a map of where you parked. I mean, that's just brilliant. That's brilliant design, but it's so obvious. That, and this is what this is why I'm in pain, right? Because this this is like a salve for my soul. It makes me feel so much better. The other one is like a, like a, a monster chasing me, a bad design monster chasing me. So we're in this room in large part because of this. Right? Everyone knows what this is. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, right? It really is. There's nothing. There's no genius about it, but it works. It's amazing design. It works. You can't do this. My friends around the world, I don't dare tell them that I'm giving a talk today in a room full of people because they're like, people? In a room? 
You can't do that. But you can, because of this great design. Right? This design enables me to continue on my journey. <laughs> this, right, you can all fill in the blanks on this one, right? You've all been through help desk hell. So I, I did it the other day. Literally this week, I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you guys about. And I rang up Amazon, right? I had a simple problem, rang up. And, I, and I, first I went online. I had a problem with Amazon, go online. If you've got a problem, go here. So I go here, I'm going through it, I'm going through it. I'm like, all right, this, I'm not feeling good about this, but I'm going to persevere. Don't give up, right? Don't give up, persevere, going through it. And at the end, it says, uh, select one of the following questions. And I'm like, they're not really what I was going to ask you, but I thought I'd have no other choice. I'll select one, boom, right to the beginning. So it's a circle, right? It's a circle of misery and despair. And what I found was there's a phone number. So I thought, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll ring up. It's probably going to be a recording, right? It's not, it's a person. I'm like, oh, brilliant. Came on quite quick as well. And I, I asked the question. You know what she did? She went through the website with me. And I said, well, you haven't really helped me. You know, all you've done is read out what I've already read. And she said, oh, well, uh, if you want to call back, someone else could help you. And I'm like, they'll do the same thing. She's like, yeah, yeah, that is, well, they will do that, yeah. So then I thought, all right, I'll go on Twitter, because if you say something bad about on people on Twitter, they're like, oh, better, better fix this one. You know what they do with their Twitter, Amazon, if you're watching, you know what your Twitter does? It recommends your website. So the misery and despair and absolute harrowing, gut-wrenching awfulness of your website is reproduced by people and Twitter. Now that, to me is a great thing of wonder. And you know, the irony is, right, I love it. As much as it causes me pain, I love it. I love it. Because what it does is it teaches me over and over again what to not do. And in my career, I advise companies and, and governments and institutions and people and all kinds of things on design, right, when, I work, when I'm not being a dean. And I need examples of things that suck. And Amazon, you suck, right? Your customer service. This is your help desk, right? Now, on the other hand, that's not dwell on the misery, right? This is a restaurant in New York. I'm sure if you've been to New York, it's conceivable you've been there. It's called Balthazar. It's brilliant. It's just amazing. It's huge, about 250 covers. It's full from pre-breakfast to after-dinner drinks. Full all the way through the day. Whatever meal you want to call it, it's full. It's, it's just perfect. And it doesn't matter what I think, right? I'm, I'm telling you that. Who cares what I say, right? But it's full of students and hipsters and KOLs and celebrities and sports stars and tourists and, and everybody. Every, one of, every person in this room could go here, right? And you still feel special about it every time you go. And it's been open for 20 years. It's, the, it's arguably the most successful restaurant in the world. And the guy that created it, Keith McNally, he's got nine of them. And they're all different. And the reason I mention it is not an advert for Balthazar, but it, it's uncompromisingly brilliant in its design. Like, he agonized over the color of the ceiling so that it properly replicated 100 years of accumulated smoke. And you can't smoke, obviously, in New York. So it's an example to me. So and when I see these things, you know, in my misery and on my journey, I'm like, oh, thank God. Oh, oh it makes me feel better. Like, someone cares about design, and the pain stops for a minute, the, the Amazon pain. Uh, you want a better solution even than that? So. Look around. Most people have got something black, right? Whenever it's a... I'm, I'm in fashion. Everyone wears black all the time. Black is the most popular dye color. This is black. There's black TV. Like, there's just black colored things everywhere. And they're all dyed black. And it's the most polluting color. And pollution's bad. You can't do that. And 60... It's around 60 to 70 percent of all dye is black. So that's a problem that needed a beautiful solution. So this company came up with one. They use wood pulp. So after you cut wood from trees, the stuff that's left over would have just got pulped and dumped in a river, but they use it to create a black dye. So that's a beautiful solution. There's another one that gets me right to the top of the mountain. It gives me a view of where I'm going. I'm like, oh, I feel good about this. I feel good. You can't build a pyramid in Manhattan. That's a ridiculous idea. It's just a stupid idea. Like, you can't do it. And Manhattan skyline, very famous. There's no pyramids. Well, there is now. Bjark Ingels created this, opened a couple of years ago. It's a pyramid. Now, the, one of the reasons why you can't build a pyramid is that the most expensive part of any real estate is the top floor, the, the penthouse, right? We all know that. We've all perhaps heard of them or been to them. And so you can't do it. So he's like, well, I'm going to watch this. So you've got to be a bit mad, right, to create genius design. You've got to be. And all the people around him, all the other real estate dealers, which you can see in this picture, putting those big square buildings up, they're like, no, 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 don't do that because, because we need everything to stay the way it is. It needs to stay the same. It can't change. 
because we need the top floor. That's the, that's the expensive one. And he said, <coughs> not only am I going to do that, I'm going to put all the, the, the lift equipment and the water and all the service equipment in the top. So you're not, if you go to the top floor of my building, you're going to be nowhere near the penthouse. There is none. And so it was, it was a genius bit of, of radical change in the industry, right? And it, it's uncompromising. And I'm, at the end of this, I'm going to actually give you a couple of guidelines for what you can do that I've learned from these guys about trying to achieve the dizzy heights that they achieve. So this is one of them, like uncompromising. You've got to be a bit mad. It's impossible. You can't do this. But he did it. And now there's a pyramid in New York skyline. If, like me, you wear your trousers a little bit shorter or a jacket a little bit shorter or maybe a little bit tighter, it's his fault. So all the men in the room, whatever you've been wearing, I don't care what you're wearing, right? I don't care what you dress like, but I bet whatever it is, if you compare it to the same thing you bought five years ago, it's a little bit slimmer, a little bit shorter. It is, and it's his fault. Now, the reason I use this as an example is because he is uncompromising in his view on design. He never gives in. Now, you don't have to like it or not. It doesn't matter. It's already affected you. And the people that designed your clothes, they're very influenced by him. And he is utterly, he never gives in to bad design, ever. His office looks like a TV commercial, utterly meticulous, geometrically set out. Everyone looks formal. Everyone wears gray in his kit all the time. You're not allowed anything on your desk that doesn't look the part. It's absolutely, like, overwhelmingly designed, but it's uncompromising. It's how he's managed to change the industry. And don't think that someone like this is a small business, right? It's not. A billion dollars it sold for. Xenia bought it. So I know we don't, we don't usually talk about money, but listen, it's successful. And it's had a massive influence on what we do. So this, again, has got me at the top of the mountain, looking at where I'm going with the horrible monster of, of Amazon and Buick and United chasing me with their bad design. So here's what they do. This is the bit where you can take a picture. They create beautiful solutions. So all design, all good design, is creating a beautiful solution. It's just solving a problem, but do it beautifully. It could be the way that a clicker works. It could be the way that your help desk advises people. It could be the way, the place that you live, the clothes that you wear. But it's got to be brilliant. Brilliance only, please. If you're not going to do it brilliantly, just don't bother. Don't, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a spreadsheet, do it beautifully. Hmm? If it's a building, make it brilliant. My, my old assistant, when I was um, the dean, We'd do a huge project. We'd finish it Friday night late. It's all set. We're done for the weekend. We can take it. We can relax. And she would wave one piece of paper and say, is this the best? Is this brilliant? This one piece of paper? And we'd look at it and we'd be like, mm, no, it's not. So back to work on Saturday. Got to do it. So brilliance only. Never give in to bad design. Ever. You can't. You can't. Because when you do, Amazon wins. I'm not against Amazon, by the way. They just, their help desk sucks. I, I'm, I'm reeling from the pain of that. But they win, right? At United, with their sucky service, they win, right? And actually, I, I would argue that they want to win because they hate us and we hate them, so it would be better if we don't fly. But don't give in to bad design. Don't do it. Now, impossible is nothing, right? You've got to start with that. You can't put a pyramid in New York. You can't do it. You can't make men wear trousers that are too short. You can't do it, right? It's impossible. That's nothing. Get me started. I used to be like, when I was, when, uh, one of the jobs I was doing, which I keep mentioning, sorry. Anyway, we used to do things and people would say, that's really good. And for me, that just meant you better do better next time. Right? You've got to do it better. Impossible is nothing. You've got to just do it. Do it. People love meetings, right? Zoom calls and, and doing a project binder and, and proposals and all that. Just do it. Do it. Because if you don't, you're just talking. You might as well do that in your bedroom to your mum, right? So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to leave you with an example of all the best of these things wrapped up in, in one. Now, this will mean a whole lot less to you if you're not English, as I am. Anyone in the room that's English will recognize this. So in 2001, we were trying to get into the World Cup. We weren't great, but we were quite good. Uh, but we were losing. We were losing to Greece. And David Beckham, who I'm sure most of you in the room know, he managed to get us a free kick in the last minute of the match. The last minute. It was all over. We lost. We were done. And then we had this lifeline, this one kick. Now, you can see, there he is, bottom right of the picture. He's got to kick the ball over those people in front of him and into the goal without anyone touching it, right? And the goalkeeper is looking at him going, I'm going to catch, you. I'm going to catch this. That's not going in, because if, if he catches it, we've lost. So Beckham, he kicks the ball. I don't think kick is an accurate word, actually. It's not even, you can't even, it doesn't begin to summarize it. He somehow magically transports the ball from his foot to the corner of the goal, right? And since then, of course, the country exploded the... The stadium exploded. It just was the most fantastic moment in football. 
But since then, scientists have tried to analyze how he did it. You, and they can't. You can't do it. You can't. It's like the three-body problem. You know that, that, those wonderful books written here in China where they're trying to figure out that mathematical equation and there's no solution to it. There's no solution to this. You can't do it. That's where you need the impossible, right? That's where you need the brilliant solution. That's where you can't compromise. You never give in. That's where you need the, the brilliance only. And that's where you start with impossible. And then you just do it. So with that, I leave you. I encourage you to go out, help me with my journey from bad design to good. Thank you. Thank you.